Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the best password manager. And this is kind of a weird video for me to make. I've kind of had difficulty uh, in making this video. Uh, one reason is, is that initially I thought I was going to review each password manager on its own. I was going to make a tier list. I was going to go through them, review them all. But as I was doing so, I kind of felt like it was a little bit pointless. The reason is, is because a lot of password managers are pretty similar. Um, some of the leading ones like LastPass and 1Password, for example, have pretty similar pricing structures around $36 a year. And for most intents and purposes, they almost work exactly the same. Pretty much the same with Dashlane as well. So if I were to rate a lot of these kind of three password managers, some of the biggest ones, some of the other ones, a lot of them would get pretty similar ratings with hardly any difference. And now with my VPN reviews, that's not always the case. Often there is huge disparities in pricing between a lot of VPNs. Often a lot of VPNs get a lot of press, a lot of VPNs don't. There's more complexity and depth to reviewing VPNs that I've discovered over the years that makes it so easy to review and talk about them. But with password managers, ultimately I think they are a more simple product um, than VPN. Not only that, but with VPN, some VPNs do some things really well and fail in other categories. So if my VPN tier list had like two VPNs that were tier one and every single other VPN had almost an identical um, rating, just 3.0, and I had like 20 VPNs with the same rating and two VPNs that were just better, you know, what would almost be the point of the tier list? But password managers for most intents and purposes, you know, are pretty similar. However, that's not to say that there isn't some differences that I do want to make in this video and tell you what I think about some of the most popular services. And later on, I'm going to recommend two of the best services I think that you should check out. Firstly, I want to talk about 1Password. And now this is a pretty respectable password manager. It has a pretty good reputation. Initially, it was known for being a really good Mac password. And a lot of people who like Macs and Apple products do use 1Password. Um, it has a really good layout on most devices and it's really easy to use. It's kind of more minimalistly designed, kind of similar to, you know, Apple's design itself. It has some cool features like you can have a secret key when you're adding new devices to add some extra security. It's got kind of like an emergency kit where you can fill out information and kind of download it in a PDF to give to someone in your family in case, I don't know, you die. It's lacking some, you know, more buzz features like automatic changing of passwords like you might see with something like LastPass. But the developers of the service don't really think it's that useful since most of these automatic changing of passwords don't really work that well anyways. They only work for like really core some websites, you know, like Twitter or Google or something like that. And it can prove tricky if you have two-factor authentication enabled on these things and stuff like that. So overall, not a super useful feature. Overall, I didn't really think 1Password was missing out on much and it did pretty good at most things. One thing that did annoy me about it though is it was always asking me to verify my password. Pretty much every time I log into my browser, it would be asking me. I tried disabling that so it wouldn't ask me as much and it didn't really seem to work. Um, there's really no option, at least from what I could find, to disable it asking you so much. You could set a time limit, but that's about it. Uh, it seems like it really does want you to keep verifying it. And I even found other users kind of with the same problem. In terms of LastPass, um, I've been using it for a couple of years. The only really bad thing about LastPass is that it's kind of questionable in terms of security. Uh, there's been a lot of security leaks and the team has always, you know, assured people that it's fixed things before anyone's information leaks. So it's not a huge deal, but its reputation definitely is not as strong as some of the other ones out there. However, I think LastPass, from when I've been using it for a while, it's been very um, user friendly and intuitive. Um, in terms of, you know, the password thing, it doesn't make me verify it too much. You can put a timer for like 10 days or something, 30 days. So you're not always having to type in your password on your browser. Um, their, their customer support has been good. There's been a couple times where I lost my two-factor authentication and I could get back in and, you know, verify my account and so forth with LastPass. So I like their customer support and overall the applications have been pretty good. They've gotten better. The interface is good as well. And it was overall just a pretty solid service that I didn't really have any problems with besides, you know, the reputation. And, you know, it keeps happening a couple of years, uh, even the one recently happened and a couple of years ago and another couple of years. So ultimately, I don't really want to use um, LastPass anymore just because its reputation is not that good. But it is really easy to use and intuitive and there wasn't really any huge annoyances I had with the product. 
In terms of Dashlane, now Dashlane is one I haven't used that much. I've tried to use it, but I've found a lot of annoying things on their website. Take for example, there's no forgot password feature, which make it what made it really hard for me to create an account because I, f I lost my password somehow. So I was switching password managers around, testing out things, and I couldn't figure out how to forget my password. I would have to make a new account, but then I had to make a new email, and it got really confusing, so I just kind of got annoyed at that part of the process. Not only that, it's the most expensive password manager by far, around $60 a year instead of around $36. It kind of tries to bundle in things to make it worth the purchase. It kind of reminds me of how antivirus companies kind of bundle in different things with antivirus to make it more of a like an attractive bundled purchase so they can make more margins. Kind of a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of that, to be honest. I've also noticed some problems with their website, like I was looking into their affiliations and things like that and it wouldn't let me submit the form with you know different kind of add-ons i had blocking tracking and stuff like that so that was a little bit annoying also account creation for dashlane feels a little convoluted you're having to download stuff right away and sign up and everything like that so that's a little bit of annoying in terms of the free trials though dashlane and lastpass have one one password it didn't but you know lastpass and one password at 36 and dashlane was around 60 dollars now there are a couple of other different password managers out there like Keeper and a sticky password or something. But I looked into some of these and a lot of them are kind of missing some features like, you know, cross sync or having the ability to use it across multiple devices. Ultimately, they don't seem as mature or as popular services. So I didn't really look into them too much. But now to the best ones um, that you should probably be using. Um, there are two options here, I think. Now Keep Pass is one of the most popular uh, password managers in terms of you know operational security it's probably going to be the best kind of security that doesn't have any potential leaks um, the way it works is that it's like all encrypted on your computer and stuff like that not so much in the cloud now you could put it in the cloud through dropbox or something to sync across devices uh, but ultimately i think keep pass while it might be the best in terms of operational security and just you know brute force security it's not that user friendly even the website itself looks very clunky and most people who use it are pretty familiar and you know good with computers and technical applications and stuff like that it's definitely you know has a learning curve and the applications itself aren't like you know developed by the company it's you know open source so the applications on the android store are going to be kind of separate so there's not like a just one thing to download one thing to download you could have to choose even an app to download on android that will work with it which is kind of annoying as well but like i said it is very secure and open source and very trusted so if you're someone who has more technical knowledge and patience and don't really mind a learning curve, this might be a good product for you or you probably already heard of KeePass as well. Now, another one that is personally going to be the one I'm going to be checking out for a while and I really like is going to be Bitwarden. Now, Bitwarden is a free service with an upgradable model um, that gives you features like two-factor authentication and just a bit more security and stuff like that. You can test out the free model, then move to the paid model. And the good thing about Bitwarden that makes it so much better than some of the other services is that it's only $10 a year compared to $36 a year from the other services. It's quite a better deal, uh, especially when compared to something like Dashlane. It's not going to try to give you these extra services just to ramp up the price. It's a core password manager. And now it pretty much has all the same features from the other applications as well. It syncs across multiple devices. It has, you know, fingerprint support. It has autofill. Now it lacks a little bit of the polish and, you know, pizzazz, maybe some of these other applications. Like for example, when you're clicking on something, it's just kind of like, kind of like old school, like little, you'll see what I mean right here. It's, it's not quite as intuitive as clicking on a little icon and just having the interface of the password manager show it to you. So probably eventually they might make that look a little bit better, but you know, the main, there are some advantages. You could see more accounts at once if you have multiple accounts for a service. So that's kind of cool, but it does definitely not feel as premium in that sense. And I've found a couple of other little bugs as well with Bitwarden, like the verify email bug. Um, it just wanted me to verify my email, I already did. And it was just kind of like a visual bug just showing that I hadn't verified it yet, even when I had. But Bitwarden does have a lot of cool things about it, a lot of cool features that are pretty much what you need for a password manager. A couple things like that no lock button. Remember before I was talking about how some of the password managers would keep asking me to verify. Bitwarden has a lot of different customization elements. You can ask it to remind you in a couple hours. So I was kind of confused about the way Bitwarden does it is because they have an option that, you know, when your system is locked, but basically what it means by the system is the browser itself. And I found a thread where people were discussing it um, and, you know, the possible options. Bitwarden says there's some kind of API restriction 
um, not being able to do it any other way. So you can either have it re-verify every time you open your browser or you know every four hours or so if you keep your browser open um, or if you close and reopen it, you're always gonna have to input your password. Um, or if you push never, it will kind of store the file on your computer so that way you don't have to re-enter it, which is kind of interesting. Um, but something like LastPass had an interesting solution. It would do it for, you know, 30 days or something like that. Maybe it was temporarily putting it on your computer or something like that as well. Um, but, you know, at least a Bitwarden does provide that option to store it on your computer uh, because I didn't see that as a possibility with one password. So overall, guys, why should you use Bitwarden and KeePass over so many other options? Well, one, KeePass is completely free, it's open source, and it probably has some of the best security out there. Now, it's not gonna have that cloud kind of sync across devices unless you go to the hassle of having a Dropbox file and everything like that with your keys stored. Um, and that is where Bitwarden comes in because it's also another really good option that's more intuitive and user-friendly. It's also had third-party audits and stuff like that, as well as open source design, and it's really trusted in the community. And it's so much cheaper than some of the other options, only around $10 a year, instead of $30 to $60 like some other options. Not only that, it pretty much gives you all the same features and even some more features to boot than some of the other options out there. Anyways, guys, let me know if you like this video. Let me know down in the comments down below what password manager you use and why you use it. And I'll see you again on the next video very soon.